guys, what's up? Welcome to the new tutorial from the uh, SketchUp Parker Studio. SketchUp Parker Studio is here with some new tutorial about the rendering in Enscape for SketchUp. So we will review high quality rendering setting in Enscape for the beginners or advanced users. So before we start this tutorial, I'm going to show you this environment. As you can see, we have simple type of living room and this is the window opening in here. So I'm going to start my job with the visual setting. So in the outside, we have the clear skybox, but in the skybox in the visual setting, I can change the source of it to the white cubes or white ground. Completely depends on you and what you want from your render. I prefer to use white ground for now. And I'm going to click on the output, to change my rendering format to the JPG and let's get to work. In this case, I created some type of render X1 in the view management before this tutorial. So as you can see, we have this type of window frame for our rendering and I want to start my job. My save frame is on and my perspective on the one point perspective. So I'm going to click on the visual setting in here and start my rendering. So in the uh, atmosphere, I'm going to start my job because we have the uh, high level of sunlight and sun saturation on our environment and these type of renders is not really realistic at all so I'm gonna remove the uh, sun brightness and decrease it as I can maybe some number near to the zero can be really good for this job so I prefer to use complete zero for this type of lighting as you can see now we have this view in our job so about the night sky brightness we don't have anything to do and fog is completely turned off but the shadow sharpness if you look at these places on your 3d environment you can see the details very simple and easy for example ambient occlusion something related to the uh, shadows between the objects you can see in here for example these toy in here and you can see the shadows in this place or the table's shadow under this part of the render as you can see for decreasing all of these shadows you can decrease the shadow sharpness and you can see the changes very smoothly in your environment so eight percent is really good number for it and the artificial light brightness is related to the uh, line lightings in this place i add some type of line lights in my 3d environment and you can see it in the uh, sketchup in here these line lights in here and I'm gonna click on the uh, Enscape in this place and I can see the view of them very simple and easy so for the artificial light brightness if I increase it I can see the changes in my environment and when I go to the far side I can see these effects much better and much realistic than the other times but this type of lighting is totally wrong because in the real world we don't have any type of lighting like this. So how we can fix this problem? Type some number lower than 100, for example, 94% for your lighting or something about 78%. Now we have some normal lighting in here. If you want to fix this problem, you can only increase the main light source power. So I'm gonna click on the line light in here and control the luminous intensity of it and you can see the changes in this part of your render. Something about 444 can be really good. And I'm gonna click on the maximizing Enscape in here. So about the uh, view management, my atmosphere and artificial light brightness and shadow sharpness is something like that. Ambient brightness related to the interior lighting with the sunlight. So we don't have any sunlight in our job. So I will turn it to the down numbers. Intensity of the wind is not important. So in the uh, image bar, I'm going to use the uh, auto contrast. As you can see now, we have this view in our job. So I'm going to click on the view management. Render X1 in here is ready. So I'm going to close it. Click on the visual setting and increase the exposure of your scene as you can. Some number about 64, for example. I can hold Ctrl U and I to change the uh, Sun GI calculation. Very simple and easy, something like that, for example. And 
now time for the rendering so i'm going to click on the uh, field of view in here and decrease the field of view as i can so some type of render like this can be really good for my job i will watch out about this part of my rendering and this part of my shots so now i can change my camera to the two point projection and the exposure can be reduced to the 50. So when I increase or decrease the exposure, you can see the changes in the environment and it's very simple and easy. So the exposure is about 53% can be really good. And I'm gonna turn on the depth of field, turn off the autofocus and focus on the place that I want. For example, the wall or the sofa or some other places like that. I prefer to focus on the wall in here and some number about 6.3 can be really good. Depth of field can be decreased to the uh, 10% and I think everything is done for us right now. In the uh, image bar, I can play with the color temperature and create some type of a little bit warm render. So 4600 Kelvin or some number about 3000 800 Kelvin can be really good. So now we have some type of a little bit unsaturated render. So how we can fix it? I can increase the saturation a little bit to create some warm colors in my job. 114% can be really good. Motion blur is zero. We don't have any blue and lens flare is completely zero. As you can see, I want to increase the awignate a little bit not too much for example 38 percent can be good and chromatic abbreviation is totally not important in here about the atmosphere everything is checked so i'm going to open the uh, asset library for my job as you can see so i'm going to click on the asset library and now i'm on the selection tool so i can select this toy in here change the color of it to the uh, some brighter color the form of it and the color of it as you can see so I can click on the apply changes and something like that is much realistic and funny than the other times I can click on the move option and fill out my camera front of it as you can see very simple and easy so in the other part I want to click on the armchair in here click on the selection tool and if it loads for us I'm going to change the color of it to something near to the brown now it's much better and i think everything is good when i click on the visual setting in the skybox change the source of it to the white cubes you can see some little gi calculation and effects on your render and it's really good if you increase the sun brightness to the four person for example you will have better and sharp render in your job and i suggest you to use it if you need it so for now, everything is done for us and time for the rendering. But before I do this job, I want to close the uh, Enscape in here, maximizing the SketchUp. So in the uh, general setting in Enscape, I want to turn on the NVIDIA Denoiser to see what happens. So I'm going to click on the Start Enscape again. Maybe, maybe it will be crash for us for a second because you switch your graphic card on the Denoiser mode and your software can be sometimes not detected it. So it takes a little bit time and after that you can see the result and it's really wonderful. So this is the main lighting that we have for our render preset. But if I want to press F and click on the render X1, maybe your lighting change a little bit, not too much. So I'm going to click on the visual setting again in the atmosphere. My sun brightness is about 4. When I increase it to the 7 or 16 percent, you can see the changes in your environment and it's very simple and easy. But I prefer to use some number like 4 because it's good and the uh, shadow sharpness can be increased a little bit, not too much. Some type of dynamic number about 66 or if you want some super smooth shadows, you can turn it off and convert it to the zero. So I'm gonna hold Control U and I and change the uh, sun as you can see. In this type of case, you need to know what is the beauty in architecture. 
and it's a little bit experimental but I think some type of lighting like that can be really improve our job and our settings so I'm going to minimize it another time I'm going to click on the Enscape material editor pick up the marble number one and add some dark tint color for it you can see the effects much better than the past so something like that can be really good in the Ametallica I can increase it with some high level of numbers for example 46 and the roughness is about 14 percent or I can increase the roughness a little bit or completely decrease it to the zero so four percent is good for this type of rendering and I think everything is done for us I'm going to increase the specular a little bit and image fade is about 94 and my color is about Gainsborough so everything is really wonderful in the wood 51 I can change the main color of it to the uh, pearl color something like that or I can create some light color like that and it's really perfect so roughness is about 31 percent and now we have better result in our job and the specular maybe is about for the wood I think it's about 59 percent so I'm going to maximize it again in the uh, visual setting move it in this place click on the image bar increase the bloom option not too much I repeat that not too much look at this place in here when I increase the bloom option to some number about 4% you can see some type of faded lights in your environment and when I increase the lens width to the 46 now we have better and graphical result for our job so everything is done for us right now and I think it's really good and it really works well so rendering depends on many type of factors and elements one of them is the PBR materials and another one is your experience in rendering so everything is done for us right now I think we don't have anything to change it so I'm gonna add a little bit outline for these places of my roof and sailing so 6% is really good and I think time for the rendering I increase the render to the ultra and you can see the change is very simple and easy my final exposure maybe some number about 55 percent so I'm going to click on the screenshot button save it on my desktop and press save as you can see it will take a little bit time and after that you can see the final result in your job much better than the past so my final speech with you is that uh, we spend most of our time on these tutorials and it's really important for us you support us subscribe us and watch our videos till the end because the SketchUp Arc Studio is one of the best sources for learning rendering in your 3d softwares so this is the final result that we have in here as you can see and it's really great I hope you enjoyed this video guys thanks for your time thanks for your watching I love you and goodbye